Hey guys, real quick before the video starts on the SP3, I have a huge announcement. We are launching Ammo Australia in March of 2024. In fact, I'm going to Australia February 24th through March 4th for our launch party. It's gonna be huge. We're gonna have a massive car show. We're gonna be detailing a ton of supercars while we're there. And I'm actually preparing cars for the Sydney Harbor Concourse as well, doing some talks and some tutorials. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'll put links down below to every one of the events I'm gonna be at. Now, with that in mind, if you're in or around Sydney Harbor, I'm looking for cars to detail for the channel. So if you have a barn find, a supercar, motorcycle, anything that might be a really good story, let me know. Send me an email to support at ammonyc.com. Again, I'll put all the links down below to all the events. I hope to see you guys soon. Now, let's get into the video. Big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. More on this later. Hey, what's going on guys? As you can see in the studio, we have two of the most highly coveted Ferraris that Ferrari makes today, the A12 and the SP3. Now in last week's episode, we detailed the A12. We put a clear bra on it, coating the whole nine yards and it's about to leave. When Dominic came in to look at it, to be like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. We surprised him with the SP3. I put a link to the video above if you haven't seen it. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> surprise oh my god but this particular car we need to get done in two days normally it takes me about a week or two I can take my time but because this is the second one in the country from what I understand it actually has to go on a press tour in New York City and so I have to polish it out and then I'm gonna put wax on it we're not gonna coat it uh. then in the springtime it's gonna come back and I'll do all the other things to it and we'll take it for a ride because it's snowing outside so that and a whole lot more today on this episode of drive protect the Ferrari SP3 is the third model in the Icona series of limited production specialty models. This one has a voluptuous body, wraparound windshield, and of course, the retro looking strakes on the rear and front bumpers. Under the rear clamshell sits the same V12 from last week's surprise video, the A12 Competizione. This one comes packed with 829 horse and a red line at 9,500 RPM, weighing 3,300 pounds. So the zero to 100 is less than six seconds, which is crazy. Now there's only 599 being produced. These are already sold out, most of which have been sold to customers who already own other Icona series cars like Dominic. Now at a base price of 2.2 million, and as this one sits here in the shop, nearly $2.4 million. I think it's appropriate to get her dressed up for the ball in New York City later on this week. As you can clearly see, this one too has the new car love marks, sanding pigtails, and squirrels found on pretty much any new car these days, which will require a few days of polishing. But first, a pre-soak to avoid causing more love marks by accident. To do that, I filled the foam cannon with ammo foam and boost and added some water, then dry foamed the paint. After a few minutes, then I rinsed. Next, I wet foamed the paint by adding more water and less air to the foam can to increase the lubrication during wiping. Then I filled the buckets with warm water and went to town on the wheels first using Animal Plum, which is a high pH or basic cleaner. Now, most ceramics don't really like to play well with low pHs or acidic cleaners. Animal Plum isn't, so you should be safe. Now, either way, I always work one wheel at a time and never let any product dry on carpet ceramics, then rinse quickly afterwards. Afterwards, a gentle wash and brush agitation in the tight spots. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform on which to create your very own website. Now what's really cool is you can connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content and manage your members, send email communications and leverage audience insights all in one easy to use platform. Create a community on your Squarespace website with a fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies and likes. And you can use their powerful blogging tools to categorize, share and schedule posts too. Mm, that smells good. Extend Squarespace's already powerful e-commerce capabilities with Squarespace extensions. Display posts from your social profiles and automatically push website content to your favorite social media channels so your followers can share it too, like this one here. Go to squarespace.com for your free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash ammo NYC to save 10% off your first purchase of a domain or a website. Now, back to the SP3. 
Okay, at this point, I've washed the car. It looks good. We're going to dry it. We're going to use compressed air, and then I'm going to go in and polish it. This is a little bit of a different situation here. Because this car is so rare and tons of people want to see it, it came here first just to kind of get cleaned up. Then it's heading down to Manhattan, and they're having a huge unveiling of this. So the process that I'm using is a little bit different than I normally would normally put it up on the lift and do all these crazy things underneath. I, I just don't have the time to do it. So after I polish it, remove any blemishes, then I'm going to put wax on. The reason I'm doing that is because when it comes back in a couple of days or weeks or however long it takes, then I'm going to put a clear bra on it. On top of the clear bra, then I'll put a coating. So I don't want to put a coating right now because then I'll have to take it off before I put the clear bra. So you can see there's a lot going on and I actually legitimately have to get this in the next couple of hours because they're coming tomorrow morning at about 10 a.m. So I have about four or five hours worth of polishing before it hits the shelf. To polish the SP3 and pretty much any car, I always wear a detailing belt. I set up the six inch polisher on the cart first, get fresh waffle finishing pads, sheer cutting pads, exfoliate polish, and of course my dust mask for the pad blowouts that are sure to come. Step one, I tried the foam pad and the paint was much better when I was done, but it didn't have enough cut to get all the way through the sanding marks on the paint fast enough. Otherwise, I would have been there for an extra few hours. So what I did was switch to the sheer cutting pad to increase the cut rate, meaning I didn't want to spend all day doing one panel. You can do that if you want to take a slower, but if you have more confidence, go in with the sheer wool cutting pad and you actually just cut at a much faster rate. After a few minutes of polishing uh, this area here, uh, ironically, uh, I, don't, I don't ever normally see this on, on a Ferrari, but it's actually incredibly hard paint. Not difficult as in like difficult to do. I'm saying in terms of hard, it's very hard. Uh, normally, uh, Ferrari paint is very soft. So that's why it's easy to kind of swirl and scratch and all that kind of thing, but it's also easy to polish out. So it's kind of a good thing. In this case, it's probably a little bit harder um, to uh, mar or scratch this but it is also equally difficult to get it out. Now, what's interesting is if you see, a lot of this is very voluptuous. It has big round kind of areas like this and swoops. These particular areas, you see I had this whole thing here and it was actually pretty good. This spot right here, I didn't do well. And the reason I didn't do well is because the pad, it has difficulty laying flat. If you can see here, there's a little bit of a gap underneath there. See that little gap? Is a gap. So when you when the pad is is rotating, it's banging or karate chopping against this. So if you had a very tapered pad here, it would karate chop even worse. This is a straight cut pad, and it still does it just because of the angle of the slope here. So what you have to do is turn and tilt up, and so that this as it's oscillating can kind of get in there and it kind of flows a little bit and as it starts to flow this will actually rotate and as it rotates it's cutting more and able to get this area but if you were just to kind of cruise around here and not look at it like you were just kind of painting you know a two by two section and going back and forth and not going in and looking at it afterwards you would miss that spot which is why i miss that so the the problem with a car like this is it's beautiful, it's huge, it's gorgeous, and it's so voluptuous from a detailing perspective, you have to price that appropriately because you're gonna spend so much more time because of those voluptuous uh, swoops and, and concave and convex areas that are gonna require you to manipulate the pad and change around the motion of uh, polishing to get the area that most people miss. So I have a lot of work, not just in terms of real estate, it's because it's so undulating back and forth. If I was just doing, let's say a Cadillac, a huge kayak, even more uh, real estate or more paint than this, it's easier because it's flat. When you see something like this, you really have to, uh, one, appreciate the car because it's beautiful, two, uh, appro <laughs> appropriately charge for your time. On the exposed carbon fiber roof, you can see lots of swirls and a few sanding marks. Now, this is how the rest of the paint looks as well, but because most of the paint is very light in color, meaning yellows and whites and silvers, they all tend to hide or blind your eye to the white-ish scratches that they contain. They don't really look as bad, but against the black of the carbon fiber background, you can see just how prevalent they look despite being identical on the yellow areas. After I got really comfortable with how hard, meaning how physically hard versus soft the paint was, I made a game plan and then the rest was just slowly going inch by inch around the rest of the car.
As you can imagine, after 10 hours or so of polishing this car, I started to lose my mind and drift off into Pandora land. 10 points if you know what Pandora station I was listening to. When I was going through the editing process, I didn't realize that I left my mic on and I was going to town, so my apologies for what your ears are about to suffer. And now I wish that I can just ease go. I wish that I had just ease go. What can I find a woman like that? Okay, now at this point, the car has been compounded and polished. So I did a two step. Now I'm going to put some wax on. Like I said before, I'm not going to put coating on it. Now, the little trick that I do when I'm putting wax on, especially inside, meaning not outside in the sun, it's pretty cool in here, it's uh, temperature controlled, etc., is I'm actually going to wax the entire thing then go in and take it off. Why? Because it's not gonna really make a difference, especially with uh, Reflex Pro uh, finishing wax, meaning it's not gonna be rock solid. Like if I were to put skin on it or something along those lines or a coating, yes, there's a time limit to this one. Not really, unless you're outside. So next, I'm gonna go all the way around the car, put some wax on it, remove all of it, and then we'll work on the wheels. And I know I need... On the cockpit area, I cleaned up the dust and the delivery smudges with lather and a microfiber towel, and she looked fantastic. Nobody on the road. I also waxed the wheels with finishing wax just to increase the color, even on a matte finish wheel. It brings a lot of depth, a lot of richness to it, and you can actually see the difference before and after. I really like how it cleaned it up. Finally, I worked on the glass and the tires. Now the glass has the usual new car kind of greasy feel from all the new plastics gassing off on the interior. Again, very typical. I used Obey glass cleaner, a scrub pad, and I just tried to lift the grime and then squeegee it all away. All right, so I'm behind the camera right now. I'm just cleaning the windows, pretty easy. You can see it's not a big deal. It just has the normal new car kind of scuzzy, uh, you know, oily kind of thing on the windshield, not a big deal. But if you look at the edge here, it's really hard to get and stay in focus. You see those little dots? Those dots I've been wiping and wiping and wiping and wiping and they're not coming off. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Might be water spots or something. It doesn't feel like water spots. It's also not very oily. So what I'm doing is uh, I'm gonna put the camera down because I can't hold this at the same time. But you're gonna be able to see, um, I'm gonna use a little bit of light compound on that and just go back and forth, back and forth, and put a little bit uh, more than normal pressure. So instead of like light, medium pressure, I'm gonna put a whole lot of pressure because it's glass. And you'll see that these little dots will start to come out, but they're not coming out with wiping. They're just not going anywhere. So that's a little trick that you can use. Check this out. That is the smallest sun visor I've ever seen. That's hysterical, you got two little ones here. And if you look in the back of the seat here, look at this piece right, right here, it's all Alcantara. I've never seen that underneath the headrest on both sides. I'm not exactly sure what that's about, just like extra support or something. There's so many unique little pieces on this car. All right, now we need to start it and take it outside because the trailer's coming pretty soon. She's loud. Here is the door handle way down there. Uh, she opens up. Pretty sure it beeps when you know you have the key in your hand. Get in carefully. Whilst remembering, you gotta do that. Uh, okay, as I mentioned before, it doesn't have the, uh, the big push button, it just has the haptic touch. You take this. Has a beautiful little spot, let's turn it so it looks nice. Put this here, kind of clever. I didn't take the wrapper off either. Put on the brake, hold this, here we go. Oh. Obviously a, a camera, you know, because you can't see anything, so I'll turn it back. You got nothing behind you, see it back there? So, here's your uh, rear view mirror, and you can see the releases for the, uh, the top, right here, that little green says lock. Kind of crazy. Are you ready to go out? Are you ready to go out? You ready to go out? You ready to go out? Here, here we go. Ooh, slammed very nice. Think about it. Drives me nuts as the window goes up and down, and you see there's a little spot on the window now. I've cleaned it 15 times. Right, here we go. 
first gear. So here we go. Wow, this is pretty crazy. She is incredibly wide. Oh, look, average speed of four miles an hour. That's so cool. Nothing like a 3D, and what's so cool is when you get out, you can actually see the tire right there. It feels very F1-y. Well guys, there you have it. The Daytona is all done. Like I said before, it's a little bit of a funky episode because I haven't been able to completely finish. So it's gonna come back in the next couple of weeks after the show. This thing's being enclosed, trailered down uh, to New York City. Normally I would just take it outside and go for a drive, but naturally it of course is raining. Plus uh, with the 296 video that I shot, it's likely uh, I'm not invited to the Ferrari party down there. So I'll see if somebody can grab some photos when it's on display. But again, it's gonna come back here and I, I do have some more work to do. I wanna show you a few things around the car that I think are super cool and some things if you do uh, detail one of these uh, to be super aware of. So let me show you that right now. The wheels are awesome, matte finish. You just need to be a little bit careful. In this case, I put wax on it because it's gonna come back. I'll put a coating on it later on, but you still wanna keep that matte finish. Even putting wax on is just gonna increase the depth, not necessarily the shine. I think you can see there, you would agree with me. That looks very, very clean. It's very consistent. However, when you are putting wax on, let's say I go like this with the wax, and then I go over here and I miss this spot, you will see a sort of a hue or a depth difference. So you make sure that uh, you hit all of it. So kind of like doing mousse or leather conditioner on the inside, you know, on the leather. If you miss a little bit here and there, you're gonna see the difference. Same kind of concept here. Now onto the things that I think are ridiculously cool. I would say my favorite part of this uh, car here is the door. I think it's pretty unique. It's very cool. Look at that. I think it's a piece of artwork. Um, and I actually like the oversized inlaid badge. I don't like the ones that are sticking out. I like the ones that are inside. See, it's a little bit bigger than a normal one. I dig that. I also like the fact that inside the seat is fixed and just like a race car, the, the um, pedals and the steering will come to you. I think that's really cool. One thing I miss on this is in the 812, there was a start button. <laughs> start button is right here the car is off so you can't see it on right now I like the red button you push it and you can feel like you're gonna launch obviously you have the you know the knob right here I, I think there should have been a push button here but again this is all modern cars just like the 296 it had that kind of haptic feel and haptic touch other than that I mean this thing is absolutely spectacular and obviously from a detailing perspective this is a whole lot of fun so make sure that you go in there by hand because I just don't have a tool that can fit in these little louvers there, but man, are they cool. Anyhow, it's opened. Look how cool that looks. Gorgeous. But now more importantly, I can get access to this, these water spots right here. You see them? Yeah. Yeah, they're coming off easy breezy, uh, but I do have a little bit more work to do in here. I got to polish that and clean all this stuff up. But, uh, as always, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.